Welcome back to the channel everyone. In this video, we're gonna triple the runtime of our 12 volt battery system in the camper van. This is how we're gonna do it. Let's do it. So, in the early days of the channel, I made a video that went through my 12 volt electrical system that I've got in the van. If you wanna watch that video, please visit the channel pages in the playlist and you'll find everything you need in there. Um, but basically, I have a 12 volt only system. I don't run any 240 or any mains electricity um, in my van. There's just no need for me. And I use Renergy components. So I've got a Renergy solar panel. I've got a Renergy MPPT to DC control unit, which manages all the charging. And I've also more recently, uh, again, video down in the playlist, uh, fitted a battery shunt to help monitor all that situation. So when the choice came and I made the decision to upgrade um, a runtime in the van, Renergy would seem to be the sensible choice. And sure enough, in the post a couple of days later, once I've made the choice, I had this rather large box appear. Let's get it open and see what's inside. So it comes packed really well. We've got the instruction book off to one side, I'll show you in a second, and packed out in this polystyrene. Let's whip this out and I'll take a good look at the battery itself. Now this is a Core Mini 300 amp hour battery. So let's get it out of the box. We'll have a closer look at those specifications. There she is out of the box in all her glory. I'll just get in on the specs and we'll talk about them in just a second. Size wise, it's not much bigger than my flooded battery. It's certainly taller. I don't think it's much longer. So hopefully that'll be key, but let's have a look in a bit more detail what the specifications of the battery are. Hopefully you can make out the numbers. This is a Core Mini. Um, it's not the Pro. It's a lot cheaper than the Pro. But you've got some interesting specifications. The ones we care about here, hopefully you can read them. This is 12.8 nominal voltage, rate and capacity of 300 amp hours, uh, maximum charge current of 150 amps, maximum discharge current 200 amps, surge discharge 380 amps, and an operating temperature of minus 20 centigrade to 50 centigrade. So this has got low, low temperature protection built into it as well. Right, so okay, we've got a nice big new battery with really great specifications, but why is it that I've decided to make the change now? The system I've got is operational, still works fine. I've uh, never run out of power when I'm out and about on camping trips. So what's behind changing it? Well, there's a couple of things really. The may or may not know, um, a lead acid battery doesn't really like to be discharged below 50%. Um, and a big advantage of lithium is you can fully discharge the battery without damaging it. So there is in the key information about why we're doing this change. Um, my old battery, like I said, is perfectly fine and works great on camping trips, no problem at all. It's 100 amp hours, which is enough. It's been fine for running the fridge and lights and everything I need when I go camping. Um, but now I've added more and more things that run, you know, albeit low power, but they run the whole time in the van. So there's now a 4G internet connection. So I'm able to connect to the van anytime I like, CCTV and a few other items that I'd run in the background. Although the output of that is really low, the draw on the battery, sorry, is really low for, you know, it accumulates daily. And if you're in the position now where we're starting to go in, we're in autumn, moving into winter, the sunshine time is less, which means I've noticed over the last couple of weeks, my battery level has started to creep below 50%, uh, especially if I'm not driving the van every day, which I don't. I mean, I still I use it to commute, but I don't drive it every day. So all that being said, if I swapped lead acid for lithium at the same amp hour, 100 amp hour, then I could have avoided the problem. Um, so I, I'm able to discharge the lithium down to zero, as we discussed. Can't do that with a flooded battery. But like with everything, when there's an opportunity to upgrade, let's do it. The price difference between the 100, 200 and 300 um, on the Renergy site isn't that big if you look at the, um, the, the cost per amp hour, if you want to work it out that way. So the 300 really was the sweet spot for me. That gives me triple the runtime of my existing battery 
Uh, and in reality, it probably gives me a bit more than that. But we'll test that, we'll test that because we're able to discharge this battery uh, a lot more than we are on the flooded one. I'll say about this battery, I purchased this battery myself from Renergy with my own money. Um, it's not sponsored or anything like that. As I explained before, all the rest of my kit is Renergy and I've not had any trouble with it. Um, some people say it's not great, but I've never had any problems at all. Um, I would say you, if you buy it direct from the website, quite often they'll give you a discount code if you ask them in the chat. They did in my case, it were, they gave me a 6% discount code when I explained what I was doing and the fact that I used the rest of the equipment. So I got this at a pretty good price. So it's well worth looking at the, the official Renergy site to buy your products. So moving from flooded to lithium, after reading the instructions there uh, and reading the instructions on my controller and my sh battery shunt, we need to make some changes um, to the configuration because flooded and lithium have different charging profiles and you must change those profiles to match the type of battery you're, uh, you're actually using or else you, you know, cause, could cause yourself problems with that. So we'll handle all that when we're up at the van and doing it. I would sure you agree that's quite enough talking. Let's get up to the van, take the old battery out, get this one in, check if everything works and do some tests. Let's do it. So you join me back in the van. I've got the lid off the bed and we're going to isolate the electrics and get this swap done. So the platform's off the top, as you can see. If you've watched any of my stuff before, you'll be familiar with this. The old battery is there shunt and all the isolators and the isolator for the solar over there so the first thing we do is make all this safe before we undo the battery terminals so with everything isolated what i'm going to do now is just measure the two batteries to see if i can pretty much drop one in place of the other i'm hoping so they are a slightly different size but i'm hoping it's not going to need too much modification of the old battery or the battery coming out and here's the new one see it's a bit taller but I hope it's not going to be any wider and the terminals are both at this end or with this battery we've got one at either end but I'm hoping that's not going to be too much of a problem all right so we've got everything disconnected from the old leisure battery I'm taking out the brace at the floor because I think I'm going to need to move that a bit forward I've also just pop the diesel here air outlet out the way you notice I've covered the live terminal with the battery to make it easier to remove. The interesting side by side of the two, there you can see, we're quite a bit taller and just a little bit longer. So I'm hoping it goes straight back in the slot, but we'll we'll see what happens. That's dropped back in there pretty sweet, actually. This block that I'm using to stop any movement the other way. I'm going to have to shorten, but I think that's the only modification we have to make. On the wiring side, we've got plenty of length to go for the lives to go on. And the ground terminal looks like it's going to sit on there perfect. And these are just the temperature sensors, which I'll put back in place in a minute. Looking pretty good. It's now in place with the brace to stop it moving around. Um, all the fuses and stuff are still disconnected. So this is an important stage. We're gonna put back the lives first, screw them down, and then the ground afterwards. But like I said, keeping everything off because we need to change the type of battery in the shunt and in the DC to DC controller to make sure everything's fine before we power back up the system. Everything's hooked up, so I need to go into the app now. All the trips are still off. All the power supplied to the equipment is off. So I need to go into the app and change the battery type.
going to be a little tricky to see, but in here there's a button which you press to change the battery type. And it tells you the list of the battery types there. So ours is blue for lithium. You press the button, click it, and cycle it until it lands on blue. Right, you can see the indicator is now on the energy. The van battery is now reconnected. So is the solar. And we're charging. I'll put some screenshots in in a minute. Everything looks to be okay. Let's just re-enable the fuses, put some load on it. So that wraps up the install, pretty simple. See, I've just re-taped the two temperature probes, which both of these units have, to the top of the battery. Double-checked these for tightness, make sure the battery's secure. I've now enabled the switches, and I have a small load running at the moment, just my Wi-Fi and my CCTV cameras, and everything looks fine. So, we can tidy this all up then. So I've got the run, van running there, just to check, make sure the alternator charging is working, and that's all good. I think we're done. Right, so we're all back together, um, been for a test drive, everything looks fine, um, no problems there. Install itself seems pretty easy, that was pretty much a direct swap, I only had to move that little battery brace over a little bit to allow for the extra thickness of the battery compared to the flooded uh, leisure battery that was there before. So everything's going in. A couple of things to note though. Um, I'm changing the battery type inside of the DC to DC MPPT controller app via the Bluetooth module didn't actually work. You physically have to go and press that button, which I showed on the video the best I can. It's a bit awkward. Um, and the other thing is the battery only shipped and was about 20% charged, which was a little bit annoying because now, you know, I have to go through a period of getting that uh, battery up to full charge before I can do some more interesting content in terms of how much consumption and stuff we've got. So we've successfully then tripled our theoretical runtime on the battery, gone from 100 amp hours uh, to 300 amp hours, and possibly more if you allow for the fact that the flooded battery doesn't like to go down below 50% capacity, whereas the lithium is able to come right down to pretty much nothing and do no harm to the battery. So that's all good. So if you got this far, I really appreciate you sticking around, watching the video. If you'd like, subscribe, share, I'll be really, really grateful. It really helps the channel grow. And, and thanks for the support, the immense support, in fact, on the ultimate off-grid, always-on Wi-Fi connection, which I just, that video is doing great. So I really appreciate it. But yeah, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.